The standalone configuration of Push 3 lets us use Ableton Live's devices, a lot of Max for Live devices and sounds from PAX and our own sample library, all independent from a computer. For the most part, getting sounds in and out of the standalone push is pretty easy, thanks to what Ableton are calling continuity. This in effect means how easy it is to drag sounds, presets and full projects back and forth using Live's browser when connecting push across a Wi-Fi network. However, there is one device type which can be a little awkward to work with, which are the drum racks. As Live users will know, drum racks can contain a variety of different things. They can include synth sounds, plugins, or probably the most common use is to make sampled drum kits. Over in Live, we have a sampled drum kit here, which we've made using an assortment of modular synth sounds, which are included in Future Music's sample archive. We can save this preset in Live just by hitting this disk icon, which lets us save it here under our user library. And we can now drag our preset drum kit across to push and into our drum rack presets on push's drive. Over on the hardware now, we can go to add user library and we can see under our instruments and drum racks, we've got access to FM modular kit, which is the kit we've just imported. However, there's a problem. If we select any of these drums here, you see we get this sample is offline message. The problem here is that when you're saving drum rack presets or simpler or sampler presets in Live, Live doesn't necessarily save the samples you're using alongside the preset itself. So it's not as simple as being able to dra drag those instruments across to push and expect all of the samples to be included. There's a pretty simple workaround to this though. Instead of just dragging across the preset, we're going to save our project and drag the full project and its samples across to the hardware. For this, we're going to use collect all and save. Now this means that Live will collect not just the project itself, but all of the samples we're using. Over on the hardware now, we can go to our projects and I can load this My Presets project. Just like the project on the desktop, we've now got our FM modular drum kit. The key difference being, we've also now got access to all of the samples that are included. However, there's more that we can do with drum racks when importing them to push. One thing you might notice if you're loading up a preset you've created on desktop is that although we get access to all of the instruments and effects used on each drum pad, Push 3 doesn't give us access to any sends or returns. Now you can see over in the desktop version here that we've got several return effects set up for this drum kit, including three, two reverbs, a distortion effect, and a dub delay. Now, just because we can't access these on push doesn't mean that they're not there. If you listen to the sounds, you can hear that there's still reverb being applied. We just don't have access to any of the parameters. There's another pretty simple workaround for this though we can make use of macro controls. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna map some key parameters to these macros. And let's start first with the levels for our reverbs. You can see if we press the send button here, that we've got various elements of our drum kit sent to the small and medium reverbs. So by mapping these volume controls, we can dial in how much of each of those reverbs we want from the top level macros. To set these up, we're gonna hit map. Now first, if I hit the volume on this short reverb and then map for the first macro, 
I'm going to rename that. Now we can do the same thing for the second reverb. Now we can also set up the same level control for our distortion effect here, which can add a bit of crunch. Now because that drive is going to add some volume, let's also set up a macro for the gain after it here, so we can dial that level back down to compensate. And now finally I've got this dubby delay effect here. And I'm just going to set up a macro to control how much our snare here is sent to that so that we can create some kind of dubby snare effects. So there we go, we've got a few effects set up using these macros. Now we're going to use the same process to transfer this kit across to push. Now again, we can go over to projects, load my presets, and you can see this time not only do we have the samples themselves, but we've got these macros set up that we can make use of pushes, touch sensitive rotaries along the top to control the level of these reverbs and the other effects such as this derby snare. Now that we're happy with how we've got this all set up, we can save this drum rack to push through each drive. We'll do this by holding down save and pressing the button above our drum rack. Now that's saved our FM modular kit to the drive on push three standalone. And we can now head over, create a new project if we want. And if we go to our user library, we've now got these latest versions of the FM modular kit. Now this one is the original one that we transferred over without the samples and we've kind of duplicated that as we've saved new versions. So let's go with this most recent one and we can delete these other ones so that we've just got one preset. And now if we load this most recent version, we've got our drum rack set up with our working effect macros. And it's all ready to go on Push 3 standalone. If you want to try this out for yourself, you can download this drum rack, the project files, and another drum rack that we've set up for use with Push at the link you'll find below this video. Thanks for watching.